Well, Liz, thank you so much for chatting with, a, chatting with us again. Really, I appreciate you being on the show. Nice seeing you. Thank you. And last time we spoke, you were talking about how in season three of The Chosen, Mary Magdalene, she gets to be a little bit more measured or perhaps uh, balanced in the way that her character is, maybe not so emotional as we've seen her in previous uh, seasons. How do you feel like that did play out in season three? I, you know, I when I got the scripts, I was like, oh, yeah, she's it's an easy season. But then as I performed them, I realized, like, no, she still has a lot of <laughs> It's less like heavy emotional stuff for her and more, I think, these scenes with other people where she's, um, I don't know, she's kind of a helper this season. And there's some really intense storylines going on where she's uh, there to kind of give a little bit of advice because she's been in, in you know, chapters in her, of her life. Of, she's been in a lot of pain and so she can recognize it in others. So it's some really, really sweet interpersonal dynamics for her this season. Um, and in episode seven and eight, there's there's an unexpected one too, which is kind of cool um, concerning Matthew. Mm, yes, we are. <laughs> we are looking forward to seeing the finale. No spoilers there. But there is something about Mary's character that relates to many of us, I think, who, you know, gone through difficult things and then we're thinking about how does what I've been through impact the way I now live my life going forward? How do you think Mary Magdalene answers that question? Yeah, I think, you know, for for season two, she has this backsliding moment where she kind of returns to her own way. She comes back and lives with this sort of residual shame and it's it's kind of keeping her back from really... I think stepping into the the role that we know her as as, as part of you know this this group and in a in a confident way and um and this season she has you know in episode six this wonderful conversation with Tamar played by Amber Shana Williams and um she's kind of called out she's like Jesus forgave you and you're still like you won't let it go you won't let mm. your past fully go and so I think. Um, she's a good example of like what, what, what it looks like for real growth. It's two steps forward, one step back. And like, she's, she's trying and then, you know, sometimes her shame will bubble up and, and affect the way she sees things. And she's wondering if she really belongs there. And so all these little things that, that kind of add up, but ultimately she's reminded over and over again that she is loved and she belongs there and Mm. um and I think this season once that really gets through to her she's able to reach out to other people and have the confidence to give the advice that they actually need Mm. um because I think when we have our shame or our guilt or our fears we if, if we want to reach out to people we think, well, who am I to to give advice, you know? And and so at this point, she's like, well, I, I think I do know what could help. And so she's mm. she's more confident in that way. What do you think it does take to be able to step past past shame or past mistakes and be able to move forward, even even though we may have a really difficult history? You know, I think it's it's different for a lot of people. Um, I think. I'd like to say that time helps, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's, I think it's real self-forgiveness as well. I think it's knowing that you are uh, loved, (laughs) you know, that everybody makes mistakes, that everyone goes through dark chapters or difficult, painful chapters and, and that God is with you through all of that. And that in many ways, you can use your pain and your past to help others, to reach out to others. And I think mm. knowing that there's a purpose to that pain is really important. Um, but it, it requires, I think, you stepping forward and being like, okay, I'm going to be responsible now for the rest of my life and responsible for my behavior and actions. And, um, and you know, I think there's a little bit of maturing in Mary this season and I and I've seen that in myself too of like of what what it looks like to stop blaming the world or blaming it and it's just like okay I, you own it and then you you forgive yourself and move yeah is it kind of cathartic playing Mary Magdalene I think so yeah I mean season one episode one was probably the most, <laughs> most cathartic thing I've ever done um but beyond that it you know she's she's constantly this She's a character that's sort of in my life all the time that has influenced me of, of someone who, um, you know, 
is finding her confidence in, yeah. in belonging. Yeah. How has her relationship with Jesus evolved in season three of The Chosen? It's so funny. She doesn't actually have that much interaction with Jesus this season. He's out and traveling with the disciples and um, and the ministry is growing so much. And there's so many new characters that it's really coming to this sort of fever pitch. Um, and she's sort of back in the village with the women and they're they're keeping, you know, the finances where they're trying to figure out a new business to keep the ministry going. And um, so there's, she's just, her focus is on kind of the practical stuff, the day-to-day hmm. stuff um, for this season, but I don't know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. And the, the role that the women play in the ministry of Jesus and within the Bible, that's something that this season has focused on quite a lot. And in previous uh, conversations about other seasons, you've said how the chosen brings a, a dynamic nature, I suppose, to the way women are represented. They're not too righteous or they're not simply prostitutes, as you put it at right. the time. How do you think the chosen has done that to really broaden out what we can see from female characters within the Bible? This season especially feels like, I mean, there's so many beautiful female storylines um, and wonderful female characters that are really strong and unique. And we're just seeing sort of the gamut of the female experience this season. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, I don't think, well, I think it's wonderful that The Chosen is is choosing to tell these stories, but these stories were in the Bible. You know, these are the, the first woman that Jesus said who he was to was to the woman at the well, you know, the first miracle was with his mother at the wedding at Cana. So like there's, there's a highlight, I think a spotlight on women in the gospels in the new Testament. And I think the chosen is just honoring that and, and, and sharing those stories. And I'm so glad that they're really doing that and, and doing, um, you know, a, a beautiful job of it. And each season really is an evolution on the one before. What have you loved most about your character and perhaps the season as a whole this time around? Um, I think this season, everyone else was had so much to do. They, they were out in the heat in these big crowds and everyone was complaining about how like difficult it was on them. And my, all my scenes were like inside <laughs> with one other person. They were like, not the easiest things, but much easier than the things I heard from from the other actors. So mm. I think I it was kind of a a resting season for me. Like it was it was um, just focused on these one on one interactions, and um, and each of these interactions, I, I can see Mary growing a little bit in in her confidence and um, and I think in her faith too. And so I've just liked and appreciated and enjoyed performing those scenes where it's mm. just, it's, you know, personal growth and it's maybe a little unnoticeable to the others, but like, you know, she notices it. <laughs> Does that influence your preparation process, whether it's, uh, I suppose, going into Mary Magdalene's character or even just each scene, the ebb and flow of what's required? Does that change the way you approach and prepare for your role? Um, I feel like she's gone through so many different types of emotional states and scenarios in the course of these first three seasons, uh, that each scene does require a different type of preparation. Um, this season, there was some similar preparation for all these scenes. It was just honestly showing up and, and memorizing my lines and, and really being there with the other actor because most of them were one-on-one -on -one scenes. It was just, mm. it was really about the other actor and what they were going through and giving them what they needed and, um, and just being present and listening. And, um, and that's easy, <laughs> you know, that ends up being <laughs> so much easier than, I, I mean, I'm thinking of the first few scenes I filmed in season one, it, they were by myself and they were very emotional and there's no one to play off of. So mm. it was that sort of prep work was very different. It was a lot of imagination. It was a lot of triggering thoughts and reminders and, and you know, build up in my own head to, to get to a certain emotional place. But now mm. all I have to do is like look up and look at, you know, Paris like responding to me and I start crying. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. gotten much easier <laughs> with the wonderful actors I get to work with. 
Yeah, so much easier with great scene partners. And I th- feel like it's so all-encompassing, whether it's for you individually as an actor, bringing your craft to the, the project, and even just everything that has been built up around The Chosen, the great team that are there, yeah, the way the community yeah. of fans relate to this series. How do you feel about that nature? This seems like a whole-of-life thing. Are you okay with that? Um, it's, I, I mean... It's been so gradual, the growth, like it, we started as just four episodes crowdfunded in the middle of nowhere, Texas. <laughs> and it was just like, we weren't expecting this to, to get to where it's at now. Um, so it's just been the, the fan and from the beginning it was crowdfunded. So we knew that there was a hunger for this story. Um, so there was always a sense of support, I think, and real love and community. Um, but it's just been growing and growing and growing. And now I think, I don't think my mind has caught up to it. (laughs) I don't think I've I've really processed like how big it's getting. And every time I do have a moment of like, oh, wow, this is, this is happening. And this is, this is big, you know, Mm -hmm. I like, I almost forget about it. I go back to my daily life and, and, you know, clean the dishes and go for a walk. And like, it's, it's, um, it's just in these moments where it, it hits me, but I think the response from fans is it's just so sweet and so beautiful. And people have shared so much of their heart and experiences that like, that is what has impacted me most of just of people are feeling seen and people mm-hmm. are feeling connected and hopeful from a television show, which, you know, is, is this rare thing. And I just, I feel so grateful to just be a part of it. Yeah, it's got to feel really strange stepping out of a, you know, first century set and then going and looking at your phone, doing the dishes, actually driving a car, you know. <laughs> you know, we we there's a little transition there. Once <laughs> once the the veil's off and the you know, you change into modern clothes, you can snap out of it pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, and like you say, this has been a series that's impacted so many fans right around the world. It's offering people a lot of hope. As season 3 comes to a conclusion, what do you hope that it really has brought to the people who watch it? I, I mean, I, I hope that one, they're they're feeling the sort of excitement of the story of what the story is actually telling, um, and that they're feeling seen by it, that they're feeling uh, that they're relating to the characters. Um, and I also hope that they're getting excited about what's coming, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, these these miracles and these healings, like it's getting more and more uh, closer to the, the historical story that we know. And um, to see this team tell that story and knowing where it's going, I think it's, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't read any of the scripts, but I, I can only imagine that it's going to be told in a new way and and um, in an honest way, in an honest approach. And I, I hope that people are excited about that because that's what I'm excited about is just seeing the continuation of this story unfold. Which- yeah, well, we are very excited. Liz, thank you so much for chatting with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much.